This is Cold War Conversations. If you're new here, you've come to the right place to listen to first-hand Cold War history accounts. Do make sure you follow us in your podcast app or join our emailing list at coldwarconversations.com. This is the second part of my chat with Thomas, who worked in a secret East German radio monitoring base. Part one is episode 312. He describes how a Brixmiss or other military liaison mission vehicle had once got onto the base and what the East German army was told about the military liaison mission capabilities. When his officers weren't around, he and his comrades listened to Western radio and watched Western TV. Gorbachev is now in power and liberalisation has started in the Soviet Union and the East German government worries about contamination. Thomas describes his participation in the protests in Dresden and is totally shocked by police brutality against the citizens of East Germany. We talk about the opening of the wall and the decline of East German army discipline as the country starts to implode in the march to reunification. We also hear some surprising details about the contents of his Stasi file. I'm delighted to welcome Thomas back to our Cold War conversation. At least uh, once in the half year, we were we were uh, told uh, how to react in case uh, of a so-called MLM alarm, military liaison mission alarm. The military liaison missions were British, American and French units that were allowed by a treaty signed straight after World War II to patrol East Germany to minimise tensions between the Western Allies and the Soviet forces. We have a number of episodes about the military liaison missions, so uh, do check out the link in the episode information. That was part of the, of the, of the regular training, and uh, we, they and we took it really seriously. So, um, OK, what happens if, if we get this alarm? Or when, when is the time we get this so-called MLM alarm. What what sh- shall we do? So we got this alarm uh, when when the the, the, the MLM guys uh, approached or they left the highway from from Erfurt down to the south. I mean there were no highway at that time, so you had to to go over the pass in Oberhof, and I guess many kilometers before. Uh, Stasi had them on the radar, and uh, so that that means we got this message, uh, and then we were all the, the the company was alerted. Okay, there's an MLM alarm. Immediately shut down the windows. Immediately uh, uh, roll down the, the the curtains. Only whispering until the the alarm is released, and then the ones who are not on duty. I mean, the the, the sentries were enforced. We only had one sentry at the gate. And uh, but we had these little bunkers over the hill, so the bunkers were stuffed with with additional sentries, and they were equipped with uh, uh, with blankets and uh, newspapers, huh? because that was clear. We were told if you come across uh, somehow uh, such an uh, uh, MLM car, you can stop him, but you can can just uh, cover his windshield or his his uh, windows. Either with blankets or with uh, with uh, newspapers that they can't move around anymore, and then immediately to inform the the officer of duty, and and the officer of duty would would have informed the Russians to come over. So this was really a big deal, but to be honest, without knowing anything about the background, uh, why they are here, why we are afraid of coming to our our object, so. N- it's really strange if I think about. I mean, yeah, you have this 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 allies. That you have the the the, the British, you have the, the Americans, you have French. They are the enemies, and they are they can come somehow close to our object, which they are forbidden. And uh, I remember they were sort of threaten, threatening us also with with this um, military lies on mission story so there was one tale and I, I i don't know if it is really true or if it's just a fairy tale but there was a rumor ongoing two three years before i um i came to to that outpost um 
I told you about the, the, the large band before the gate, huh? And all the supply trucks, when they when they, when they brought uh, the bread and and so on, they just uh, uh, beeped the horn, and the sentry came and just opened the the, the gate, and then they came in. So pretty relaxed. Huh? And uh, someday they also hear the horn beeping, thought it's it's a it's a it's a supply truck, and then boof, a, 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 a G wagon or jeep at that time. We didn't know what the G wagon is. Uh, went in on the on the, on the uh, I mean, there was an open place between between the, the 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 barracks and the and the service building. Went in, turned and immediately got out. Got out before the sentry was even able to realize what happened and closing the gate. Huh? And I mean, they were telling this story many times. This is the capability. They are so rude. They are. They are. They are. They are overruling. Uh, they, they are not respecting any laws, any any posts, and so on. But what a story, huh? We were told. Listen, they have a really high tech. They are cars. They are able to turn at the spot because they have a four wheel steering. They can steer each wheel individually. So that means you have to block them from each side because otherwise they just turn on the spot and and then escape. And uh, actually, what I learned later on, I mean that that was not true. That was fake news. But yeah, they had double double fuel tanks and and uh, fortified uh, ground uh, clearance and and these sort of fancy light switchings and so. I mean they were well equipped, but but this was what we were told. They, are, they really have high-tech cars, and they have these long-range microphones. They have thermal in, uh, uh, vision imaging. They even can can listen how you click your your, your keyboard, or they. Uh, that's why we had to shut down the the the, 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 the curtains. They have this this uh, yeah powerful binoculars that they even can watch what you are writing down. So and. That's why we had to whisper because they have these 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 long range uh, uh, microphones. And then another rumor was going, but but I'm pretty sure that was one uh, to really threaten us to make us aware what could happen. Because uh, one day we were told, listen, uh, yeah, we we got a picture from uh, from one of our uh, soldiers that that was stopped by an uh, by an American jeep. And the picture was showing that he pointed on his watch or, or was talking to them. And you see, they are trapping you. They, they, they pretend uh, to, yeah, what's the time? You go there, you just say the time, and then they send you a picture. So never, never, or never talk to any of these guys because they are the devils. They will blame you. They send the, they send these, these photos. Uh, to to your to your commander and then you're uh, messed up well the bricksmith guys did have always said that the nva were the most disciplined uh certainly versus the soviets that they rarely got any engagement or any easy way in to an nva position yeah because we were really really were alerted and trained to be to be cautious huh? But the funny thing is, later later on, I found out that there is a uh, Stasi Stasi file mediatek uh, from from uh, from Seoul, and there there was an article and uh, about the activities of um, of them because not sure I don't have these detailed maps, but I I guess uh, our area, our hill, and also Seoul, they were permanently restricted area. So, and uh, and in that in that media take, I really found a picture, supposedly taken outside from the fence by some of the Prixmas or USML uh, guys, which is really fascinating, huh? because then then I realized, yeah, they were really there. They were lying in the in in the in the in the, in the underwood, and really were watching us and. Uh, but, but but we never have seen them. I mean, they they got a good come camouflage. <laughs> but uh, but but it would be fun, really, uh, if uh, if some of of these guys who is who may listen to your podcast, if if we uh, if we can get in touch uh, to 
to hear the other side. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll put the word out um, certainly through the podcast. But w- were you told why these military liaison missions were allowed to drive around East Germany? Not at all. Not at all. I had we had no clue, and uh, surprisingly, we never asked. Yeah, because at that time, I mean, the Russians were there. Okay, the Americans were also there. But why are Americans going around in East Germany? We, we didn't question that. I mean, this was far beyond our imagination. What is the reason? And, and that they are not just going to, 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 to us. I mean, they are going around through whole Germany, East Germany. And to be honest, I never have seen of this. Or I, I don't, at least I don't remember. So we were never told what is the background. And of course, never told that the Russians do the same. Huh? I mean, I guess it's the ideal bogeyman to make sure that you're on your toes as far as security. They're almost portraying the military liaison missions as having supernatural powers <laughs> to uh, listen in. If you speak to you know, a lot of NATO troops, there was a, a decent likelihood the Soviets were going to come over the border and invade West Germany. Did you ever believe that NATO would try and invade East Germany? Because presumably that was the the picture that was painted to you. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, of course. I mean, the the, the, the NATO, that was the enemy. And the enemy wants to, to destroy us. The enemy wants to, to rule, yeah, to win against socialism, to, yeah, to, to destroy us. And the, I mean, we, have, uh, we knew that we had an equili- equilibrium because uh, between the nuclear power uh, power nations, but of course the, the the West German army they are the aggressors, and we are just the defenders. So we are a defensive force. Uh, of course, we have we have also tanks to defend ourselves, but we are not an aggressor force. Of course not. Huh? And uh, so that's what we learned. To be honest, at that time, I mean, it was Cold War. And it, it really was cold, but it was not as cold as it might be now, unfortunately. So uh, we were living in this equilibrium. And at the end of the day, we were, we were saying to each other uh, among us, yeah, if it comes to a conflict, if it comes to a war, it will be amongst the, the, uh, between the, the Russians and the, and the Americans. Because until we get into our our bloody stupid uh, uh, uniforms and 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 uh, and old fashioned gear and and until the the, the the west germans get get back from the 9 to 5 jobs into the barracks the, the russians and the and the and the um, americans they already made it out somehow so that was our our thinking that we we are not getting involved huh? so that was you talking amongst your the friends that you could trust uh, amongst you. I mean, you must have been a bit nervous about talking about those sort of subjects amongst. Yeah, I mean, other people. At at a certain point, of course. I mean, you are living together. You are living together twenty four seven. You are you are living together in a in a comradeship. I mean, and uh, you lose the fear. You lose the sense uh, the sense that you were trained to have, because. I mean, you, you are there, you are drinking together, you are partying together, you are on duty together, you are all day, all the time you are together. And then, you, of course, I mean, you cannot hide yourself. You, you speak openly and so on. And, um, and then I remember also a good comrade of mine, he told me, listen, watch out. I, I, ha- I suspect... That your 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 roommate or or, or I don't know if it was a room yeah. anyhow he might be one of 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 a Stasi informant and I said nah come on no way I mean we had these good talks when we when we are on duty during night shift I mean what to do during night shift you talk a lot you drink you drink coffee you drink tea um, you talk a lot and and I said no that that can't be true and then then he said. Yeah, did you realize when when he goes out, pretty unusual times uh, uh, that that he is out of the of the of the station, going somewhere, 
And I said, yeah, come on, yeah, maybe he has, he has a girlfriend. Why? Well, I don't know. So, and uh, yeah, there were the rumors that that uh, yeah that there were informants. I mean, no surprise, but at that time we didn't had any clue what is an informant. That that so many uh, so many uh, um, East Germans were unofficial informant of the Stasi. We had no clue. We 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 had these rumors. The Stasi is listening to you. The the the, the, the Stasi is watching you. I mean, I remember we had we had one phone because we were privileged to have a phone at home, but we had to share this phone with another family which lived uh, uh, four floors uh, above us, and uh, and then when when we picked up the phone, we had this this clicking clicking noise, and then we were joking, oh, yeah, the, the, someone is listening to us, and in fact. I guess they also did. So there were always rumors that, that the Stasi is there, but but we never imagined the extent which later was revealed uh, to to what extent they they so they they, they met the violence of their own people. No clue at that time. If the Bundeswehr had crossed the border and were coming up the hill, I mean, did you talk amongst your you know? Would you just put your hands up, or would you actually? Put up a phone. No, that. I mean, that's that's really a tricky question, and uh, I I don't re really remember if we really talked about that. But it was always a fear that 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 we are getting in personally involved in the conflict where we have to 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 shoot, where we have to 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 use our weapons. I don't know if if we really talked about, but but uh, knowing that that you have to shoot to 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 guys who speak the same language, I mean, being of uh, foreigners for us at that time, um, and really tricky question: if if the Germans would have shot the Germans, and I guess for some extent yes, because <laughs> you know German Germans and orders, and. But but really hard question and 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 fortunately it never happened. Fortunately the history proved uh, completely different. But um, yeah, tough tough uh, question. You you still considered NATO as the enemy, but more so yeah. the British, the Americans, and the and the French rather than the West. The, the British and the uh, Americans. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And 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 we didn't differ. To be honest, we didn't differentiate uh, between the British and the Americans because, in the, in the in the in the in the East German slogan, they were always called as the Anglo-Americans. The Ang Anglo-Americans bombed Dresden to to the ground. The Anglo-Americans, the Anglo-American uh, imperialists, blah blah blah. So they were always put together. You, you mentioned earlier about listening to Western radio. Did you watch any Western TV? Because presumably you got a really good signal where you were. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah. As I said, I mean, uh, as a, as a kid, or uh, I know, oh, I only watched uh, West t television when when we visited some relatives in Leipzig. I was raised up in a little town near Dresden. The town is called Pirna. In uh, I guess you you heard about that uh, the the well known Tal der Ahnungslosen uh, the valley the valley of the clueless I mean actually we were not so clueless but uh, at least we didn't receive any any Western TV stations or radio stations so I was completely fascinated by by the, the, the I mean the advertisement uh, the, the the advertisement break was the most fascinating thing to to watch uh, watch to and to be honest the the, the the first time where i regularly watched uh, western television was in the army because in the service floor on the uh, service floor where, where we had we were on duty there was a little camping tv set the russian tv set and they somehow mocked it and uh, yeah and they just need a little antenna and then then you got the the, the west tv channels where we watched uh, formula one the the, the the music show and so on, but only on weekend. Huh? On weekend, uh, we were on by our own. The, no officers were there, or just I mean, also depended. Huh? There, there was one officer who also watched with us, but for other officers, you, you you wouldn't do that. So it really depended a little bit. But if we were among us, yeah, we switched on the TV. TV. 
Well, Formula One, the music show, not Formula One motor racing. No, 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 no. Uh, the Formula One, it, 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 that, that was the name of the, of the music show. And uh, to be honest, this was the first time when I saw, I saw videos for the music. So far, I just listened to, to the music via pff, uh, shortwave or via, via cassette player and so on. But that was the first time when I also saw that the, the, the artists performing, <laughs> I saw them. I never saw them before. Huh? I just always had had the voice. Huh? And so, did you see like the video of Nina and Ninety Nine Red Balloons? And yeah, yeah. And uh, so that 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 was not not the big deal. And uh, I, I was listening to another podcast. Uh, what what music was was being played in the, in the discos? Huh? And uh, what I remember. Um, I mean, we had all the all the, the, the Western music. Of course, they also played some East German uh, uh, songs, but but the majority was Western. And I remember the last or the the last weekend before I, we got drafted, uh, the, the the song "I'm in the Army Now" uh, was was in the in the in the in the charts, uh, and this was played in the disco. And uh, you can imagine, knowing in in two days we are off. Uh, so we were dancing to that to that song. Just uh, reminds me at the moment. So, what was your favorite Western band then? That you you know that that when that video came on, that was the one that you you always enjoyed. My favorite Western band, <laughs> hard to say. I'm 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 more a, a, a soft uh, soft music lover. I don't Abba Abba, for instance. Uh, I liked Abba, but I, we we also danced a lot for for Depeche uh, to Depeche Mode. Huh? Depeche Mode was a big deal at the time. They were huge in East Germany. Big deal, they? big deal. And uh, I mean, I had a lot of freedoms during my my teenagehood, but the only one freedom that I didn't had was to have long hairs and and crazy crazy clothes. So and uh, so I liked Depeche Mode, but I wasn't. I never dressed up like them. I mean. Every, almost everybody was uh, dressed up like that. So I never did. But uh, funny enough, uh, I got tickets uh, now for June. Depeche Mode playing in Leipzig. The first oh. time that I go to a concert <laughs> for them. Oh, brilliant. That's that's great. I really, that's, that's really nice to hear that. So you're there as East Germany starts to rebel. You know the 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 population is the, the the unrest starts. Do you have any sense of that where you are? Yeah, actually, I mean, it started a little bit earlier with with uh, with uh, Gorbachev, huh? uh, Klasnost and Perestroika. What we heard that the, the new guy and uh, but but of course it was completely denied by denied by our government. It was yeah, I mean. The, the 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 famous saying was, uh, "Is if your if your neighbor is renovating his house, you don't need to renovate your house because your house is already is still in good shape." So that was the 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 the, ex, uh, the excuse not to follow the, the Soviet way because we were always needed to follow the Soviet way, but at that time, no way. So then we decided, ah, we can follow our our own East German way. So it started with Klasnos in Perestroika. And um, I remember when we were there in 87, um, that you were able to buy in, 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 in the Soviet Union, in Russia. And uh, I was there in, in summer, but I also was in, in Moscow in, in, in winter with a school class. So we went to Moscow also and uh, yeah, queued up in the Leni Mausoleum and so on, and uh, and they had they already had some 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 Western stuff, some some not really black market, so semi official. And then we had this uh, pretty uh, well known uh, Reader's Digest magazine, Sputnik. I guess you heard about that. I mean, Sputnik was Reader's Digest from Soviet Union, nothing special. But then with Glasnost, it changed. Yeah, you got this this really exciting articles about Stalin, Stalin's sons, and uh, whatever. So, and then from uh, out of the sudden, uh, from one day to another, they 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 pr uh, prohibited uh, prohibited uh, the, the 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 Sputnik, and then everybody was upset. I mean, what what, yeah, what is this? I mean. From our Soviet friends, from our Soviet brothers, we are not even allowed to to read their their magazines. 
So this really hit hard. Huh? And then, I mean, for for the rest, we where I was stationed, we didn't really got much. And and to a certain point, this was an underground movement, huh? especially focused on Berlin and of course Leipzig huh? with this with these Mondays uh, demonstration. But we didn't heard about that, huh? and we weren't aware. I mean, we were we were realizing okay, something is growing, huh? and uh, I mean. It really speeded up in in eighty nine. Huh? In eighty nine, when when you got the refugees uh, going to the to the embassies, uh, when when Hungary opened the, the the border, I mean that was the culmination point huh? or the, the 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 ignition point. Huh? And then it went so quickly. And uh, I I remember I was there. I was there in summer in Hungary, so I I had a vacation and. Fortunately, I got the visa, so I was allowed. So I went to to my grandparents. I saw the people because the the, the where my grandparents lived, the, the West German embassies was yeah, pretty close. I mean, it was in the public. So I saw the people there, huh? and uh, I never <laughs> I never thought, of course, joining them because it was no option at that time. And then I thought, boy, that's a lot of people, a lot of normal people, because they were described as the, the, the a social rowdies, whatever. The only de- these ones are escaping, but these were the normal people. And you realize, oh, a friend at home, oh, he's not there anymore. He's he's gone. Huh? He's somewhere. He just escaped. And uh, yeah, it was tricky time. And then then I remember coming close to 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 October the 40th anniversary of GDR, and. Um, and then there were rumors that something uh, let me let me put that in the in the time frame until the seventh everything was okay but later on we were really afraid that that we we were forced to 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 settle up on 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 the truck because we 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 trained on weapons but we never got sharp munition but that we really were afraid huh? but that's a longer story huh? What was going around uh, that these these days in eighty, especially in eighty nine? So you were fearful that you might be called to put down some of these demonstrations. Yes, yes, that was the big fear. But before, of course, we we didn't know it about demonstrations. I mean, the the the, the first or the, the when the, when the these demonstrations were growing, were evolved in eighty nine. These were small demonstrations, and. Uh, and the big outbreak happened on the 7th of October during this uh, 40th anniversary, and uh, which was for the GDR a big deal, 40th anniversary, Gorbachev was coming and so on. Actually, <laughs> that's another story. I I was scheduled to go on, on holiday on the on the 4th or 5th of October. And a friend of mine, he, he went one day earlier, but he arrived exactly on the date when the when the refugees from the Prague embassy they they were uh, they were released maybe you remember when when the the, the the West German foreign minister stood on the balcony on the, on the West German embassy in Prague and announcing uh, that they negotiated that uh, the people are freed and and are allowed to to go to West Germany but and then uh, our stupid government at that time they Insisted that the that the trains has have to go via via uh, Dresden, going through the GDR and then uh, going out uh, to to Bavaria. So, and there big there were quite a big rally because the people were waiting these trains uh, at uh, in Dresden at the at the train station, and uh, and then there were some some fightings between between the police and and the demonstration. Uh, People and uh, the station was partly destroyed, uh, burned police cars and so on. Big deal. And at, at that day, uh, my friend who, who lived in Dresden, uh, he went back and then he, he gave me a call. I mean, we had one telephone uh, at, the, at, the, um, at the entrance hall and telephone was ringing. Thomas, uh, it's for you. And then my friend told me, listen, uh, you're going tomorrow. Don't go in uniform. They will lynch you. Something has happened. Uh, people are upset if they see you in uniform. 
don't go, don't don't make it. So, and then good to know because usually then I went in uniform because you had this this uh, this uh, military ticket. So I I I put my uniform in in in, uh, in my bag and and went in civilian. I arrived on the the fifth or sixth. In Dresden, I saw this this uh, uh, damaged uh, train station, so I went home. I met uh, next day. I I met with with a friend of mine, um, and then we went on the seventh October. He said, "Okay, there is a there will be a demonstration in 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 Dresden. I heard that. Shall we go?" I said, "Yes," and and then we went to Dresden. And uh, from uh, if you step out of the train uh, train station, there's a big boulevard. So people were gathering there. Uh, we were joining them. People were waving flags and strange strange atmosphere because at that moment you couldn't realize was this in the official demonstration or is this an unofficial demonstration? What is it? And and then minutes later you realize okay there there's a one guard or one one row of uh, police uh, uh, coming up and police in 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 equipment i never have seen i never i never knew that the the the, the east german volkspolizei had shields had beat sticks had helmets we never have seen so, so, uh, something like that so they were the first ones the second one where um, the, the these these paramilitary uh, workers uh, troops uh, Kampftruppen, and the third the third one, I don't remember, but but there were quite a lot of people in 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 in, in civilian behind these these two two rows. So, and then people were 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 were, were singing the international, were, were were shouting freedom or what about democracy, what, whatever. So, and uh, and then. It really started. Um, uh, some of the civilian, they 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 came into the crowd. They grabbed people. They trucked people out to 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 uh, to these these uh, two rows of of um, forces and put them on the on the on the on the trucks. Uh, people were were crying. Were I mean, what an atmosphere! And then I really got got uh, got so much afraid of because I knew. I'm I'm here as a soldier. I don't have a civilian ID. I only have my military ID. If they catch me up here, and and it was escalating, huh? the, uh, more and more people were were uh, being arrested, taken out of the crowd, and then I really was panicking. And then if if I end up in in a prison, I will end up in a military prison for for quite a long time. And then I was trying to, or I was looking around, and then. I found a gap, a small gap, and then I was running like a like a rabbit to um, to escape out of this pocket, huh? and this po- because this pocket got closer and closer, and then the policemen they 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 draw with their, their beat sticks to the to the shield in in strange rhythm, so it phew. and yeah, and then I was running, and then uh, I, I was gone, huh? and uh, totally shocked, totally shocked what I saw, totally shocked what I experienced. Uh, totally shocked uh, how how the, the the police and 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 how they treated the people and the own people so completely out of the world and uh, yeah next day we were we were uh, with my friend we were uh, going for a hike because uh, where, where I was living is a wonderful landscape Saxon Switzerland absolutely fascinating astonishing. Uh, rock formations where we where we used to to climb around hiking a lot of hiking trails in around this this Elbe River beautiful landscape so we were going out in, in into the wild uh, towards the, the the Czech border and uh, because the Czech border was always an open border no border guards at all we never have seen border guards and we were walking there and out of the sudden uh, border guards stepped out of the underwood what are you doing here uh, yeah, we were just hiking like always. Yeah, uh, you're not allowed to. Uh, the, the border will be closed. And not sure if the border was closed one day before at that moment. Anyhow, so they, they sent us back. It didn't ask too many questions. But then then you realize, oops, sir, I'm not even allowed to the, to the only one country where we were still allowed to go freely, not even to, to, to Czechoslovakia. What? What? 
what a nightmare. And uh, yeah, so and then I spent a couple of days with uh, with my friends at home, with my parents, and so on. And uh, yeah, and then I came back to the to the barracks, huh? and, uh, and then I talked to a, to a friend of mine who who lived in Berlin, who was at the same time in Berlin, and who also experienced this this demonstration, this arresting, this and. Uh, and we were still under shock, and and then we then we thought, should we 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 need to do something? And then we wrote down what we have seen, how we were shocked, because I mean you need to write off from your soul huh, something. And uh, and then we we were putting uh, we, we we signed it with our names, and and then we were putting it on the on the on the whiteboard or on the blackboard in the in the, in the barracks, huh? and. Uh, yeah, it was there for I don't know one hour, two hours. Next day, we were called into a special room. There was always, or there was a special room where we knew this is the Stasi room. Uh, that that once a week, some Stasi guy, or it was called uh, Abteilung 2000, uh, was coming to do some business. So we were call, we were called in. Have you written this? Yes. Uh, do you think that? Uh, yeah. We have seen that, and we are. Yeah, that, that's not true. Oh, that, yeah, we, we we couldn't believe that. We wanted to express ourselves, blah blah blah. And 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 the, at the end, they, they they asked, "Would you do it again?" And, uh, and then we were so afraid, of, so afraid of of ending up in 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 this uh, notorious uh, military prison that we say, "No, of course we will not do it again." But then. And then we were really of the consequences, but that that was already in mid of October, and and then things were moving up so quickly, development were so quickly. Then this was already history. This was already uh, uh, this was gone, and then then the let's say the whole development started. So yeah. So, yeah. so they didn't follow that up then with you because events events overtook. Yeah, the events overtook. Maybe, maybe the next day or the, or the two days later, uh, Honecker was forced to step down. So uh, the, the the stone was rolling, huh? and and it was rolling so quickly. I mean, and then then from day to day, new developments, new uh, um, uh, yeah, the, the the press was full. You you were able to read articles you never read, discussions and so on. So really exciting, really exciting. And uh, but we were still a little bit off uh, in in our closed, uh, uh, isolated, isolated area there. Did the Stasi ever try and get you to be an unofficial informer? Uh, not not the Stasi. Um, I don't remember that they tried, but uh, they tried a couple of times uh, to uh, recruit me or to win me for the being a uh, party member. And uh, I mean, at that time, you, you couldn't be too harsh and, and, and tell them, hey, listen, you, you, you're just a bunch of idiots. Uh, yeah, go go away. I, I don't want to do, I don't want to have to do uh, anything with you. So, so you couldn't do that. You couldn't be so harsh or unpolite. So the best way to, to say, mm, uh, to, be, to be honest, um, I don't feel major enough to join your glorious party. So uh, maybe later, maybe I need to 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 ripe a little bit. But for the moment being, ah, I don't feel I don't feel ready for that. So and then that was okay. So I mean, they 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 tried from from time to time, but not really intensively, yeah? because I mean, they, in some kind they were stupid, but not as stupid enough. So they they felt that that what that was not really. My, my favorite to to become a member of the party so but it was a pretty good excuse they accepted because you did you did have a situation where uh you met a friend from the west in berlin yes i mean that's a story which already started uh, in school um I had a lot of pen friends uh, when when I was uh, 13 14 so 
And uh, I mean, having pen friends was nothing special. It was encouraged, but not only to have pen friends, uh, Russian pen friends, Soviet pen friends. So I also had a couple of, uh, or I had some some Soviet pen friends, and uh, via these these Mickey Mouse journals or uh, also Bravo, there was al always a, a corner uh, a look or pen friends uh, looking for if you want to become a pen friend, blah blah blah. So I wrote uh, I wrote to that, and I got some some letters. So I had some pen friends in in Japan, uh, in Spain, I don't know Belgium. Yeah, but anyhow, so. And of course, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, uh, exchanging letters as a as a as a teenager, I mean, that's the same. If you write to in Japanese or Soviet, you 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 put some some uh, some pictures in, talk about the family, your daily life. But of course, with with a, with a Western, it's much more exciting than 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 exchanging with a, with a Soviet. But at the end, yeah, simple stuff. Huh? Exchanging these, 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 uh, the, the Russians are so keen on these, these pins, huh? uh, snachok uh, in, in Russian. So exchanging these pins or exchanging bubble gum, uh, paper, inlet papers and so on. So pretty. Anyhow, uh, so I had, uh, I had this um, Japanese pen friend and, uh, and also some, some, some West Germans that, that I got to know when, when I was in Budapest just before I was drafted. So I had some some contacts. We were exchanging letters. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I told them, or somehow I told them, listen, I'm going to be drafted. I'm completely forbidden to have any contacts to any Western. Okay, for the West Germans, they couldn't understand that that they could follow or they they could follow what I meant. And uh, and to the Japanese guy, uh, I wrote a letter from from Hungary saying, okay, I'm being drafted for the next three years. Uh, it will be hard to keep contact. I will try to write letters and please send your letters from Japan to Hungary to, to the postal address of my grandparents. And uh, so we did, not, not very frequently, but uh, in early 1980, uh, my, my mother brought a letter from him from, uh, from Hungary. And then he was, he was wrote, uh, writing, okay, with, with my school class, we, are, uh, we will be in, in summertime, we will be in, uh, in West Europe. And uh, there's also a day in West Berlin or a couple of days. And maybe that's a good chance to meet there. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, of course, let's meet. But, but how? For sure not in West Berlin. And uh, yeah, how how can I deal with that, knowing that I'm I'm absolutely not al uh, allowed to to have this contact? But of course, I want to see this pen friend where we had contacts for yeah, let's say five years. So, uh, long story short, I somehow managed to give him the date and the meeting point, and uh, yeah, and finally we met. Uh, let me let me check because. We met on the on the fourth of August, 8080, under the, uh, the the famous Weltzeit or the World Clock on Alexanderplatz in East Berlin. Wow! I mean, what an emotional moment! You you walked there. I mean, there are no, there were not so many Japanese around in East Berlin, so I, I was able to recognize him, him immediately. And uh, yeah, and then you meet that guy that you were writing with for five, six years. Huh? And uh, yeah, and then we were having a, a good time in East Berlin. We were strolling around, having a beer, having an ice cream. I don't, maybe we also went to a museum you know, from, let's say, for, for six, seven hours. And um, yeah, and then he said, oh, I, I, what a nice day. Uh, let's Let's uh, let's extend that day, and uh, what what I have seen in 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 West Berlin. I mean, there there's a funny nightlife, and so yeah, let's let's go there and 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 go to disco or uh, let's have a beer or whatever. So yeah, and then I realized, okay, I mean, I spent all the day with him, but uh, I mean, must be really rare for a Japanese. I don't know what they what they were told and what they were they're going to from West to East Berlin. So, uh, and I said, sorry, <laughs> I would like, but but I can't. So I'm not. So, and yeah, anyhow, so I, I brought him also to, to Friedrichstraße. 
and, uh, and then said goodbye. But all the time I had, I had a strange feeling because I knew I, I, I did something really forbidden, really forbidden. And uh, so when we took the tram, I, once we took the tram to, to one direction, then we changed the tram and went back. And I don't know, just, just a gut feeling. Well, maybe, um, I don't know. Anyhow. But uh, no clue at the time. I went. Uh, I went back to the to the to the barracks, and nothing. Yeah, no, nothing happened. So, and actually, nobody knew that. Huh? And uh, nobody asked. I didn't tell anybody. So, and uh, yeah, fifteen. No, one two thousand and fifteen. Twenty five. Twenty six years later. I thought mm, maybe now it's a time, good time to to ask for my for possible Stasi files. I didn't know if I had anyone, so I got the the, the Stasi files and uh, yeah, oh, this whole day was in my Stasi file. The whole day, and uh, the whole day we were followed by 22 Stasi guys with six cars, and uh, they took photograph. They took pictures they took uh, uh, audio recordings which unfortunately the they were lost they were destroyed i don't know but but it was a pretty shocking moment when i realized boy 20 we we kept busy 22 of these stasi guys with six seven cars they were all the, the cars with license plate numbers were listed on that in that in in that file and uh, unbelievable Unbelievable, and then it started rumoring because the point is, after I met with with, with my Japanese friend, I never heard back from him, never. And uh, to be honest, I I never made or tried to get in contact again because there were so many things uh, after we were released from army. So and then I realized, boy, I mean, they were following us the same day, and I brought him to 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 the border station. And I only can guess what happened to him because, I mean, he went uh, through the border and I'm pretty sure they interrogated him. He took them away. He scared him to death. He were asking him, what, what is, he, is he doing with, with a member of the, of the military East German forces and so on and so on. Boah. Uh, and I would be so happy to, to, to meet him again and to explain myself that I was not the one who was handed him over, yeah, supposedly, to this this border integration inter, interrogation because I'm pretty sure they they did uh, try it hard. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean that's um, that's the story of uh, of my Japanese. So I got the code name. They called me the Radio Man. He got the code name. Uh, pretty simple, just the Japanese. <laughs> Because they always use this code name if they are surveillance people. Um, yeah, got an opening file. They asked the, the Hungarian Stasi about any contacts. Hungarian Stasi never responded. They were not as uh, stringent like like the German Stasi. So there were a couple of of, uh, of uh, data in my file. Be good to uh, speak to him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I had another experience in, in East Berlin. Uh, I told you we were working pretty closely with, with the Czech, or I was coordinating also with, with the Czech, um, Czech Army outpost there. And uh, we had a meeting with them. I mean, they were pretty funny, pretty relaxed. And uh, and then we not sure if we got awarded for, with a trip to East Berlin. Okay, nice. Going with these, these Czech uh, guys uh, to East Berlin, having a couple of days with good good meals good drinks and so on and but we 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 were going in in uniform and before we were we were briefed okay if you go in uniform in in east berlin be aware there are allied soldiers around they are allowed to go to east berlin if you get contacted immediately re report it and don't respond to it, uh, to to any of the the, the gis or the, the the british or the french they are around. They are allowed as to go there as tourists. They are in uniform, but don't contact them or don't get in contact. So, okay. 
so we were uh, we were going to the to the this this monument this anti-war monument neue wache uh, where they had this this uh, yeah, changing of the guards and uh, yeah and we were standing there watching this i mean that's a big spectacle like like in front of the fucking Palace <laughs> and uh, with this uh, Prussian Stechschritt and so on. And then we were standing there, and then one I got one oh, got something on the shoulder. Then I turned around, a big GI, big GI standing, and then he said, "Hey, buddy, how's uh, how's life?" Or something like that. Really, and the, and the, uh, the, 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 don't speak, with, uh, don't speak to me. And uh, no, no, I didn't say that. But but uh, I just moved around and and went away. And I mean, what an embarrassing, embarrassing situation. Let's say a, 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 a brother or an whatever enemy brother in arms is just saying hello, and you are not even allowed to say back hello. You just have to turn like like a, like a wet dog, and 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 step away. I mean, what an embarrassing moment. I, pff, uh, good. Anyhow, yeah. That was. I mean, yeah. there are a couple of these these moments which which stagger up, uh, uh, and then then you realize, yeah, what 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 the system is this? Huh? I mean, yeah, yeah. Just that. Did you did you report that? Did you report? That no, you no, 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 no. I mean, we were all surrounded. I mean, the, the the officers were we were next to each other, and then this guy picked me, huh? and uh, I mean, I mean, immediately turned away and, and, and went back, and so I I didn't report that. Huh? I mean, we also had uh, Mr. Jacks. They they were really relaxed and 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 good, yeah, good shape and uh, uh, nice to nice to talk with, uh, nice to 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 drink with, with them and so on. But we also had uh, quite a couple of contacts with the Russians. Um, one day we had a sort of of meeting with them, uh, or let's say a, a, a casual meeting, a sports event, a, a foot a football match. Uh, us against them, and uh, them or they were the, the 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 ones who were stationed on another hill. So they did did did, did the Russian uh, radio reconnaissance. So our counterpart on the Russian side, uh, I don't know, 50 kilometers from us. So we were meeting them um, down in the city on 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 on, on a soccer field, and uh, yeah, we were there. Some barbecue was planned, and. Uh, and actually, I mean, they were they were really trying hard. Uh, I mean, they, you know, I mean, they they were not allowed too often to go out of the barracks. If they were went out, they always went in groups, never as an individual. Huh? And uh, not sure what they were being told if they don't get a beer at the end, if they don't win. But they really played hard. Huh? And at the end, not sure who has who has won. I mean, they. They played bad techniques. We had some some good football players, but but they really tackled. They fouled a lot, and they, they were really hard. So and um, and we were all in a good mood. We had some some bratwurst, some some barbecue. We had we we got some beer, and uh, compared to them, we felt like being the the, the most free soldiers in in in, in the world, huh? enjoying a beer, enjoying a, a, a barbecue, being able to. Yeah, run around and, and so on so pretty uh, pretty amazing huh? uh, and they didn't talk much huh? i mean they, they were shy they so just the, the officers talk this 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 normal soldiers they didn't talk huh? they were among them so but uh, so we we had this football match and then we uh, once i was in in uh, in their barracks huh? and uh, yeah, the barracks I mean, they, they had these big sleeping halls, no privacy at all, just just some small belongings, all uh, uh, short haircut, and uh, yeah, and 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 the, the food that we got was was really terrible. This sort of porridge, mud, whatever, uh, strange. I mean, to to be there and uh, and and the conditions that the toilet rooms with outdoors and so on so really strange but and that's that's that was the, the most fascinating things they had also a whiteboard and on the whiteboard they had um, they had the the, no, the tv schedule for the formula one coming back to formula one but this is the real formula one 
the, the, the Formula One uh, uh, um, broadcasting times on the West German channel. So they were allowed to officially watch the Formula One in on ZDF or are they? I don't remember. At least they they they, they got uh, yeah, from uh, four to 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 five in uh, on the West German Channel because they had this sort of perestroika klasno somehow, and we were totally shocked. I mean that was unthinkable uh, for us, and um, that was really fascinating. I mean, completely different world in 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 any case, huh? And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this was the Formula One motor racing right, schedule right. they right. had on the whiteboard, and they were watching yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. TV. Wow! Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if they even realised that they that they were watching a completely different uh, the West German channel. I am not sure, but but it was amazing to see that they were allowed to. And that was yeah. normal for them. Thomas, can you remember where you were when you heard about the opening of the war? Definitely, definitely, because I guess these are some of the moments. Uh, yeah, most of the German never will forget the moment when they they heard the first time, "Oopsa, the wall is open." So I do as well. So um, on the 9th of November, actually, I was sleeping on the evening when the, when actually the, the the wall was open because I uh, I was preparing for the for the morning shift on the 10th of November. So I went pretty early to bed and then got up at three, half past three, grabbed some, some cup of coffee, grabbed a sandwich and, and, and went to the, to the service building, went there on my desk at four in the morning. And then we usually, I mean, it was silence and no, no operation at all, nothing to listen to and uh, made a, brewed a cup of coffee, switched on the radio. We usually, always had uh, the, the, the West German channels in the morning when no officers were there. And then I switched the radio on and then, yeah, the big crowd and, and people are partying and, and now we are, we are, we are switching to another uh, border station. And, and then it took me a while. Uh, uh, what, what, what is going on at four in the morning? Uh, and, and yeah. And then, then I realized, oops, the wall is open. And then I run to 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 my uh, to my comrade next door. Did you hear that? And that yeah, 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 I also heard. And then then we were freaking out. Yeah, what 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 does it mean? The wall is open. So no clue. So but we knew that's a big event, a big big thing. Something is happening big. And uh, I mean, we were uh, the, the the weeks before we had all these developments every day, something new, everything, and 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 we we realized that. Uh, history is changing, society is changing, everything is changing. But we never, never expected. And if you ask any other German or East German, nobody expected that the wall breaks down in 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 in, in one day and so early. Anyhow, uh, so we were really freaking out and then trying to 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 connect to to uh, to, to, to the radio and so on. So, and uh, yeah, and then usually in the morning at seven, eight, the officers came in. Huh? They they were all living in Seoul. They were all, all also living in the same quarter, and uh, so they they were coming in. Or oh, of course, they also knew that, that the wall is open. And then I I still remember the picture, and will never forget. Each each company had had a political officer. Huh? The, the, the red guy, let's say. And uh, I mean, he was a tough guy, also a nice guy, kind of. And then he came in l white, his face white like a, like a chalk, uh, really white face and just whispering to himself, this is the beginning of the end. And not very loudly, but, but really unbelievable picture in my mind still this guy is saying this is the beginning of the end yeah and then uh, yeah we continued work and uh, of course everybody was excited when the shift ended we we went to the to the tv and 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 watched and so on i mean pff. and of course no no big communication only radio and and what the tv was shown but that that was already enough but we were far away far away from any 
wall, whatever. So, but close to the border. And uh, the 9th of November, uh, it was a Thursday. It was a Thursday. So, okay. Uh, the next day was Friday when, when we, and then the weekend came. So for us as NCOs, soldiers, business as usual, duty as usual, and the uh, weekend passed by. And on Monday morning, I, I still remember that like it was yesterday. The officers came, happy face, uh, really in a good mood, and saying, you don't know what we did on the weekend. And I say, yeah, what did you do? We went to we went to the West. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm not the only one. I also would like to, but <laughs> unfortunately not allowed. Yeah, nice for you. Yeah, we went there and we got the money and doodle it, doodle it, and uh, unbelievable. And, you know, we were at the Wasserkuppe. And uh, you remember, the Wasserkuppe was our opposite, uh, was the, the, the Bundeswehr and American uh, reconnaissance uh, hill, which we, which we were able to see uh, at good weather. So, and, and we said, oh, w w what do you mean you were at the Wasserkuppe? Yeah, we were uh, around there, and then there, there were post signs that there is the day of the open door at the Bundeswehr. At the Wasserkuppe. He said, well, what do you mean, day of the open door? <laughs> what, what the bullshit are you talking about? Yeah. And and actually, I mean, these guys went more or less undercover because, of course, they were civilian. They joined the, 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 the people who went into the barracks. They were wandering around uh, this, this installations, which we, which we knew that they were there, that this is our opposite. These are our enemies. They got they got a nice uh, nice uh, bratwurst. They got a beer. They were completely freaking out, telling this. Listen, we were at the Bundeswehr. I mean, they are our enemies, and they served us with beer and cold beer and good beer and 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 bratwurst. And we couldn't believe that. I mean, that that that, that an army makes a day of the uh, of the open door, and nobody could believe it. But it was, in fact, I mean, this unbelievable story, if I remember that. That's and they were so happy. Favorites. They were so happy. Unbelievable. The guy who came uh, two days uh, before, he was so happy. Maybe he got he got a nice banana, whatever. I don't know. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's one of my favorite stories. That I mean, a whole like a a load of radio reconnaissance guys from the east <laughs> having a guided tour around a, a NATO installation without them knowing. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable, unbelievable. That's better than yeah. any military liaison mission. Indeed, um, indeed, effort. indeed. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. No, and, oh, and, 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 and the point is, I mean, I, I'm sure they, they didn't even think to go around the corner and to, 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 to touch anything. They were just happy about the, the free bratwurst and the free beer. So simple. Life can be so simple. Uh. <laughs> can, you, can you remember your first time you actually went over to the West? Also, definitely, because this also burned in, in, into my memories. Um, I mean, we were not allowed as uh, as drafted uh, as drafted um, soldiers to go to the west for another two three weeks. So um, we were the, the allowance came end of November, early end of November. So and then, of course, I also uh, I applied for for uh, for a vacation, and in the meanwhile. The days before, I contacted uh, this uh, this uh, West German friend that that I knew since three years, which I met in in, in Budapest. So I reactivated this contact somehow. I don't remember via via letter or I got a phone number. I don't know. Anyhow, I I I I, uh, I reestablished this contact and asked him. Listen, I. I don't know anybody in, in, in West Germany. And uh, they are, they, he was studying in Würzburg, which is not so far away from, from Suez so or north of Bavaria, Franconia. And he said, of course, of course, you can come. Yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome. So, okay. Uh, I took the train uh, to, to, to Würzburg on the 1st of December. Uh, and then... And then we, we, we scheduled a meeting point, but I said to him, okay, uh, train will arrive, I don't know, uh, 5, 6 uh, p.m., but let's meet 
at eight that I have some some time for me to to discover a little bit. So went out of the train station with all the masses. Uh, 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 went went to the shopping street and then really got flashed. Really got flashed. All the 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 lights. I mean, in in December it was already dark. The lights, the Christmas lights, the sound, the 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 the, the colorful sh- uh, uh, shop windows. The doors were open. The 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 the. The, the, the goods were sold outside. You had this, this, uh, this boards or this, the selling boards or panels outside. We never have seen selling panels outside on the, on the, on the sidewalk. So, and so completely pff, overwhelming. Then I went, my, <laughs> my, my, my first shop or my first department store was Woolworths. <laughs> I mean, really? Woolworths nowadays, it's not. Yeah, let's see. Uh, it's not the upper class, huh? but anyhow, I went. I went to Woolworths, completely shocked about the colors, the smell, the the, the noise. The... So, and uh, what do you think? What 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 was the first uh, uh, item that I that I bought from my first West money? I don't know, a Coke, something like that. A, a what? A can of Coke. No. A deodorant stick. No, no clue why. I mean, because I mean, it was just uh, ninety nine pfennig, so below one demark or just one demark twenty. I don't know. Uh, but this was the first thing I, I just grabbed and uh, to buy at least something. Huh? And uh, yeah, and then and I went out on uh, of Woolworths because I mean it was it's like. I don't know, and 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 was sitting on the bench and then uh, crying because I mean it was too overwhelming and uh, yeah, and then I spent a couple of days there uh, with my friend and and his friends and we went out uh, for uh, two restaurants, we went to a cinema and so on. So and everything of course was new huh? and um, and we went to an Italian restaurant. I mean at that time I knew what the macaroni is and the spaghetti. That we, that's all. Then you got the menu pasta. Hmm. Uh, never heard that word. What is pasta? Fusellini, tagliatelle, whatever. So, everything the new, uh, everything new at that moment. And uh, yeah, and then if I if I remind myself, I mean, it was like 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 being a monkey learning <laughs> learning many things uh, very quickly. Huh? So, for instance, uh, using a water tap. Huh? I mean, we used to have this, this, uh, I mean, your, your English British uh, sort of water taps, one for the cold, one for the hot. Uh, in West Germany, they had this mixing batteries, huh? just one, one tap, huh? but okay. You fix out that the first one, okay. If I turn it left, it, it gets cold. If I turn it right, it gets hot. The other one works a different way. The other one works with a remote uh, sensor and so on. And then you stand there in the, in the public uh, or public restroom and you're not able to to, <laughs> to operate the water taps. Huh? So anyhow, uh, that was the first trip to, to, to the West. Really amazing, really amazing. Impressive like hell. Unbelievable. And then, um, I mean, you know, everybody got the 100 Deutschmarks. At a, uh, as a welcome money, pocket money, and in Bavaria they gave 40, 40 uh, Deutschmarks on top. Eh? So I was a rich, rich kid at that time with one hundred forty Deutschmarks. Just spent uh, one mark for the for the deodorant stick. <laughs> so I had plenty of, of money, and uh, yeah, and actually, I mean, I went there uh, with with my uniform in my duffel bag. Huh? I had a duffel bag. I had my uniform with me, carrying it through through Bavaria, and then uh, hitchhiked back to the to the barracks. Huh? And uh, so hitchhiked. What was it like back at the the barracks? Did things start to relax? Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, so I was hitchhiking back. Uh, some cars took me. The one gave me twenty euros. I mean. Uh, it's edgy. Huh? I mean, you feel embarrassed. Of course, I took the money. <laughs> I was keen on the money. But on, on the other hand, I'm... Pff, I, yeah, yeah, good. Anyhow, so um, 
coming back to the barracks, everything was pretty relaxed. And uh, people were talking openly. Uh, the, 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 the border was open. Things were moving quickly. Nobody knew in what direction. But uh, quickly, we got, we got some visitors uh, at that time. Trucks were coming in, unloading some stuff in, in boxes. And, uh, and at, at that time, we as the people, let's say, we as the people, we were already powerful. And then, then we said, okay, who are these guys? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then, we, then we quickly, I mean, within minutes, we founded a so-called uh, soldiers or uh, council. Huh? And then we, we uh, requested these guys who were coming into, uh, in, into our objects to gather and to explain what they are doing. Yeah, and then it turned out they were from the from the Stasi bringing over uh, stuff, whatever, into our secured uh, fenced uh, uh, barracks uh, out of uh, out of uh, their their headquarter, which which they they were afraid that it will be uh, will be stormed, and and later on it did. Uh, so, and uh, I remember this guy. Uh, shaking in front of us because he really was afraid of us, and uh, and then he was explaining, yeah, that this is military stuff and uh, from from a uh, from a special unit and blah blah blah, which we have to bring, which we have to keep away from from uh, from bad people, blah blah blah, and uh, yeah, and then we were we were requesting, okay, but but we as the this council, we we want to have the second key, just in case. And they really handed over the second key. Huh? So they were so afraid of <laughs> of the people. Uh, uh, amazing times, amazing times. So you almost became like self governing. Yeah, yeah, more or less. I mean, uh, so we, so we, uh, we, we requested from them because usually we were called uh, Genosse Soldat, Genosse Unteroffizier, always Genosse Comrade, huh? Uh, comrade is the term for the party members. And then we said, listen, we want to be called Herr Unteroffizier. Herr, we are not, we are not comrades of the party. We don't want to hear, we want, uh, we want, don't want uh, to hear this word. So please call us Herr. And they did. Huh? And, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing times. I mean, I mean, how quickly does the whole, sort of job you're doing fall apart i mean and i'm just trying to understand sort of like you know is it sort of january time that the the whole thing starting to dissolve i mean november december business as usual we did all the same stuff that that we did uh, all the months before also in january and then there are rumors that um that the draft that uh, will be discharged from the army very quickly, maybe very quickly, because I was supposed to to leave the army in August. So, and uh, yeah, and then out of the sudden, it it came up. Okay, next week on uh, today is Thursday. Next week on Tuesday, you are being released. <gasps> I'm being released. I mean, what? I mean, we were completely excited, but <laughs> on the other hand, we will we will miss our our relaxed end. Let's say uh, end time in the army. So there. Certain traditions in the, in the army, if you are in the in, in the last in the in the last months and so on. Uh, anyhow, it it went so quickly, and uh, on Thursday they announced it. On Tuesday we got the papers. Here's your ticket back home. Have a good day. Boo. That's it. And then we were uh, being discharged and released uh, end of January. I mean, at that point, did you want? East Germany to still exist as a separate state, or were you very much of a view that Germany is is one nation and should be reunified? At the time, I mean, it started in December eh, that uh, that more and more German flags without the the the, 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 the East German emblem raised up, and uh, and that more and more unity uh, calls were uh, were being shouted at the demonstration. One country. Uh, uh, and so on, uh, unification, but pff, nobody, nobody thought about that, huh? and uh, it was out of imagination. The, the same like like the fall of the wall was out of the imagination. The same like uh, collapsing a, a system within weeks was out of the imagination after forty years of 
putting pressure, holding the pressure. Anyhow, uh, no, at that time, I, I, I didn't think. Uh, so, and then, I mean, I was released. Yeah, what to do? The, the study starts in September. I mean, <laughs> plenty of time. So, but but I need to do something. So I went back to to that factory that that actually uh, uh, supported me getting the, the study, and uh, there I worked for for a couple of months, and um, it was a spinning no spinning uh, synthetic fabrics, uh, pretty old factory. Pff, y- if you were there, you felt like being before the, the war in the 20s, 30s, as it was dropping everywhere. I mean, they had some modern corners by us, but I was working in, in, in the old spinning uh, 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 department and, and boah, really uh, unbelievable. And um, yeah, and then, then, then it went quickly. The, you, you arrived there in the morning, then, then you had a guy selling the Bild Zeitung, a guy selling bananas. And so on. Then uh, uh, guys selling whatever. I mean, they, they they came they came in masses. These these little traders and selling something. And uh, and first supermarket uh, chains popped up, bookstores, but still uh, with with the East German mark. And then yeah, you you were able to get a can of Coke for I don't know five marks, ten marks to to the to the inofficial. And uh, so and then things developed very quickly in 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 march we had the the, the, the first free uh, elections and uh, because i i remember and that's uh, my first election was still in 89 and uh, it was on a sunday election day was sunday that was my first election and these were these these falsified these these uh, cheated elections in 89 and then in march we got this this uh, first free election and then uh, soon after it was uh, announced that we got that we will get the the, the currency exchange and uh, which, which was a big deal and then it went step by step and to be honest i'm i never was the one who thought oh let's let's do a, a special way and let's keep this this uh, little gdr and we can do it by ourselves and we will uh, try to develop a better socialism because the idea is good and but the way we did it was not the best I never was that guy I was happy about what what was happening in my opinion it was exactly uh, uh, what what needs to 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 happen um the both the the, the, the west german and, and and the east german they, they took the time window they had they negotiated with the allies I mean, nobody really was happy. Uh, remember Satra? I mean, she was not the one who was really a supporter of, of a unified Germany. But uh, history proved it right. Yeah, well, events overtook a lot of um, decisions there. Um, how easy did you find it adjusting to life in the new Germany? I mean, if you are young... You're starting studying. Fortunately, I did a study chemistry. I mean, there's nothing wrong. Chemistry is that the, the molecules are the same in East and West. Uh, so that's that's good. But but when I started in September, still in GDR, uh, we quickly realized they fired a lot of, of uh, uh, professors, uh, which were connected uh, more than usual to the to the system. So there was, was big movements, and and everybody needed to adjust it. To itself. I mean, for us or for me personally, I mean, it was the start of a new new life. Anyhow, being a student, okay, student being in a completely different country, yeah, um, got got some 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 scholarship, and uh, so that for for me personally, that was not a big deal. But of course, for for all the older generation, my parents, I mean, uh, I think every East German. Can st- can tell stories of unemployment, of breaking of the families, of not uh, coping with all these rapid developments. Ch- everything is changing upside down, to the left, to the right. Everything is new. Everything is different. Maybe to the better, maybe to the to to the worse. And uh, it's not all about uh, 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 yeah 
of course, I mean, being free is, is a big value, but free being free without work, it's hard. And it hit my father. So the, 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 the factory was closed down in 92 completely just being not, not, not even being sold, just, just being demolished. Huh? And, 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 and the machinery is uh, being sold to China or somewhere. Yeah. And uh, he got unemployed. I mean, pff, this is, uh, at the time, he was 56 or so. He was simply too old. I mean, there were, there were millions of unemployed uh, people looking for, for, for some jobs and uh, earn some money. So really tough time. Tough, tough time for family. And I'm, I think... I'm not the only one. Almost every East German family can tell the stories of unemployment. And uh, fortunately, my, my mother realized pretty quickly. So she said, okay, forget about Russian. Uh, I had some French in school, so I will refurbish that. So she went on the on the school bench again for, for many months, for, for years, and uh, um changed to, to, to French language because, I mean, there were no French teachers at that time, so they were happy to have her. Uh, she she um, changed the school to, to, to the gymnasium and so on. So, had a good job, earned a good money, but, but the, 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 the roles were, were twisted. Huh? And uh, actually, I mean, for my father, it was hard. And uh, I guess for the most of them, being unemployed is hard. You have you have a history. You have, you have a, you have a, uh, you had a life. You had a business life, and from one day to another, it's it's nothing worth. And this feeling just stops when you get retired, because once you're retired, nobody is asking what what did you do. You're just a pension. Hard times for the family. It's people's identity. It's a big part of somebody's identity. It's of course, the job that they do, yeah. and when that job goes. It um, it leaves a big hole, not just financially, but I think mentally and and personally. absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and on top of that, you're being told, yeah, I mean, yeah, you had a job, you, but all you did that was rubbish. I mean, we were much better, much more productive. Uh, you you just were having nothing. I mean, you you dealt with with uh, always with shortages. I mean, what did you, what 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 were you able to produce? I mean, you are not you are not uh, 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 competitive, and so on. No, no wonder why everything collapsed. And I mean, if you get put in that light, I mean, it's 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 hard. Yeah, you've devoted your whole life to yeah, yeah, yeah. that job, and you're now told, well, that was what you were doing was rubbish, useless. But for me personally, I mean, pff, all doors were open. Uh, I enjoyed traveling. I remember the demo came one or two weeks later. I, I bought an interrail ticket and uh, with, uh, with the friend uh, the, uh, from, from the army, uh, we got on the train and we went through whole West Europe. And uh, I remember that, I mean, the, the first city was Amsterdam, then Brussels, and then we, we, we took the ferry to, to, to England, to London. And then every day I, you had, you had your, cause, I mean, this is Big Ben. I, I know we had the Big Ben on the, on the school book of the seventh class. And at that time, Big Ben was like the moon. And now I'm in front of the Big Ben. I can touch it. <laughs> and it's exactly looking like in my school book. And I'm here. I mean, pfft. Crazy moments every day, and uh, crossing these borders with with our new fancy uh, light blue uh, GDR passport, uh, pretty pretty exciting because I mean they they never have seen that we 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 came from from France to Italy, yeah, and and, and the border guards, hey, what is this? What country? Never heard that. Hey, what is this? What would you say is your fondest memory of? East Germany. Good question. I mean, I didn't have a bad life. Uh, I had a good family. Or I have a good family. I have a nice brother. Um, I mean, the, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to answer, but but the uh, but the happiest uh, moments were always vacations. Huh? I mean, they were adventurous. We were touring through to Bulgaria with the Lada, with a camping trailer in uh, in the back and everywhere. Yeah, strange to say that, that the moments when we are, you are outside, but but I don't want to complain too much. Huh? And uh, yeah, I mean. If I would ask you what are your happiest moments in the UK, I don't know what, what what's your answer after. It would probably be similar. It would probably be similar. Um, to mm. be honest, I think it's family memories and and mm-hmm. things like that because we become nostalgic about those times. Yeah, um, indeed, indeed. Because they were, I don't know, perhaps safer times or happy memories. But it, it's a question I, I just like to ask people because I'm talking about. With my memories, the country is still there, but with mm. your memories, that nation is no longer there. Obviously, the, the physical places are. Yeah. I mean, actually, the nation is there, yeah, but the, the country is gone. And uh, not only the country is gone, but many places of my childhood. My school is not there. My kindergarten is not there. Everything either was demolished or... Um, uh, uh, yeah, fate of yeah, put away. Um, I mean, do you have some 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 stuff, some chocolates which which still are being produced? But there are few things uh, that really remained, and and it's really strange that that a big part doesn't exist anymore. The buildings are not there. Everything is gone, huh? and. Uh, I mean, for me, I'm I'm not too uh, too ment- mentally sick about that, but but for many people, I mean, if you erase a whole your whole life, or not the whole life, but but part of the life that you do not even have uh, places where you can go. Okay, this was my school, and uh, this is how it looks now. Or here, this is the factory where I used to work, and it's still producing. That's strange. Huh? The whole country just is gone now. Don't miss the episode extras such as videos, photos and other content. Just look for the link in the podcast information. The podcast wouldn't exist without the generous support of our financial supporters and I'd like to thank one and all of them for keeping the podcast on the road. The Cold War conversation continues in our Facebook discussion group. Just search for Cold War Conversations in Facebook. Thanks very much for listening and see you next week.